Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 1. The only characters in this scene are the three witches, and this is the very first scene of the play. In Act 1, Scene 1, the three witches agree to meet Macbeth upon the heath. In the next scene, Duncan decides to reward Macbeth with the title of Cawdor. The opening stage directions inform us that the weather is wild and stormy. Thunder and lightning. They also tell us that three witches enter the stage. As this is the first scene of the play, it is very important. We meet the witches for the first time, and through them, Shakespeare establishes a dark and mysterious atmosphere. Remember, you should always read the stage directions carefully, as they will tell you important information about characters and the setting. Try to imagine how different directors would choose to direct the play. We are going to continue to look at the setting and the opening stage directions, Thunder and Lightning. The stormy weather reflects the evil nature of the witches and the fact that their actions will disrupt the natural order of things. Jacobeans believed in the natural order of society. This was the idea that God was at the top, the king derived his authority from God, after which came mankind and then animals, and so on and so forth. The Jacobean era is the time in which James I reigned as king. Now we are going to look at some AO2 language analysis of these same stage directions of thunder and lightning. Every time the witches are on stage, the stage directions are the same. It is always thunder and lightning. This is a motif. A motif is an idea that repeats throughout a text. Shakespeare makes a very deliberate choice to show the audience the three witches in the first scene of the play. By introducing the play using these mysterious characters, he instantly creates an eerie atmosphere and hints at the supernatural and evil events of the play that are yet to come. When a playwright hints at future events, this is called foreshadowing. In the 17th century, many people genuinely believed that witches were real. James I, the king, was a firm believer in witchcraft, and he was especially interested in the subject, and had even written about it. It was important that Shakespeare amuse and entertain the king, as James was the patron of Shakespeare's theatre company. The witches agree to meet in thunder, lightning and rain once the battle is over. They agree to meet Macbeth before sunset upon the heath. They then chant Coralie and fly away. Coralie simply means to speak in unison as a group. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning or in rain? When the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. The witches are the only characters in the play who speak in rhyming couplets. This sets them apart as different from the other characters. Their speech is also full of alliteration. A great example of this is Bear is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. The rhyming couplets and use of alliteration create an eerie mood. The witch's speech sounds like an incantation or a spell. Alliteration is when a writer chooses to use the same letter at the start of two or more nearby words. An example of this is fair is foul and foul is fair. Rhyming couplets are two adjacent lines, or a couple of lines, that end in a word which rhymes perfectly. If you read aloud the words fair, 
and air, you will hear the perfect rhyme. The witch's speech is often ambiguous and full of paradoxes. As a result, their predictions are often unclear and misleading to Macbeth. A paradox is a statement that seems absurd when you first hear it, but is actually usually true. And if something is ambiguous, that means it is unclear. The witches eerily chant in unison, when the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. And they also chant, fair is foul and foul is fair, hover through the fog and filthy air. At first, you may read this and think that it doesn't make sense. After all, how can a battle be both lost and won? Surely the witches are talking nonsense. However, as there are two sides in a battle, there is in fact always a winner and a loser, and therefore the witch's speech makes total sense. This is an example of a paradox. This links to a key theme of the play, which is that of appearance versus reality, which is the idea that things are not always as they appear. Remember, to gain marks in AO1, you have to show that you remember and understand key events in the play, so take notes. The following events occur in Act 1, Scene 1. Three witches meet in stormy weather and agree to meet Macbeth upon the heath. Their speech is full of ambiguity and they use rhyming couplets and alliteration which reminds the audience of spells. The exposition of the play outlines many of the key themes including evil, the supernatural and deception. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Check out more of our content and remember to subscribe to our channel.